ESPN FC. I'm Dan Thomas. Boring, isn't it, this sport? Nothing really to talk about. Just an extraordinary amount of discussion to be had about so many different matches that we saw take place over the last 24 hours. I think we'll start with the team that many describe as the best in the world at the moment. They certainly weren't, were they, as they lost 4-1 against Hoffenheim. That is their 23-match winning streak broken. Here to discuss it, Stevie Nichol and Casey Keller. Casey, what I thought was really interesting about this game is that 4-1 actually flattered Bayern. Yeah, yeah no question. Uh... The way that, that Hoffenheim kind of set themselves up, it was obviously that Hunas had an idea of how to get over his uncle's side. That he, they, they sit back just a, a little bit, but then pressure in spots, uh, knowing that Byron was going to have lawyers, still made a couple big saves that he needed to make to keep him within the game. But then as it just progressed, Byron had to throw more numbers forward, had to give more space in the back. And Hoffenheim just took advantage of it. Kamaric was phenomenal. Who are, who are concentrated and who can't wait to get into the fight. And obviously that's Hoffenheim. And you've got a Bayern side who clearly were thinking about the Super Cup medals they picked up during the week. Um, it was just one of those days, other than Neuer, everybody was pretty awful. Absolutely nothing. They got outplayed. They got outthought, outsmarted, outcoached. I mean, it's just you name it, and and that back line was absolutely atrocious. Uh, Alaba, who has been sensational, and Botang, who who seemed to have had a, a little bit of a second second coming. Well, I tell you what, they got exposed big time, and uh, yeah, as you said, four one, uh, very flattering. But Stevie, like others, I suppose Casey could offer offer up the Super Cup as a distraction. This was just merely a hangover, nothing to panic about. Is that the same sheet that you're reading from? Yeah, I, I wouldn't yeah. panic over yeah. anything. I mean, Byron just broke a 23-match streak. I mean, what do you, what is there to get panicky about? <laughs> I mean, just go in and, 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 and reboot a little bit and, and figure out that what's rule number one of any great side? You have to match the energy of the opponent that you're playing against. And then after that, let your skill, let your better players do the talking. Well, Hoffenheim had the more energy. Byron wasn't there. Maybe there was a hangover from Wednesday. They made some changes. Changes. The changes didn't really help them a whole lot and, and give Hoffenheim a ton of credit. Steve, you disagree? <laughs> no, I mean, listen, I, I actually watching this, it reminded me of Liverpool against Watford. You know, the one thing you know is, is that eventually Bayern or any other team that goes on a run like they have, they're going to lose a game. Now, common, common sense will tell you that you think it's going to be a good side that, that, that just pipped them. You know, we can never predict that it's going to be a team they, that they're playing against that they should beat comfortably and end up getting hammered. And that's exactly all it was. Uh, they just went at it, let their guard down because they thought the opposition weren't going to give them any trouble and bang, they end up with a thrashing. So, no, I don't think there's anything to worry about. The only thing, the only thing that MD needs to worry about is uh, Bayern's opponents next of course, Stevie somehow gets Liverpool into this conversation. Boys, thank you very much. You take a look at the table, and it is Hoffenheim, then, who sit top of the Bundesliga. A great start to the season for them, and very much the cherry on the icing on the cake, thrashing the defending champions by it. Well, going to be the biggest result in the Premier League today. Manchester City losing at home to Leicester by five goals to two. Stevie back with us, joined by Don. Um, Stevie, in a way this is a surprise, but in a way it isn't, which is an indictment on how bad City have been defensively over the last year. Yeah, I mean, it was always going to be... It was always going to be Leicester sitting and breaking. Uh, with the pace of, of Harvey Barnes and uh, and actually they've got pace all round the team to be quite honest they've got they've got a, a, a right good uh, bunch of young players that are just you know they can go to a city and not be scared and you saw that today they defended brilliantly and then on the break well another another tried centre back partnership of Garcia uh, and Aki and another failure completely so. Uh, it's not a surprise. You know, Dan, I've always been saying that he needs to get on the field and work with these players. But I'm actually getting to the point where, do you know what? 
they just can't do it. You know, you can spend 24, you can be on the training field 24-7, talking and showing and coaching and teaching, hopefully, and guys don't get it. City's players, defensively, don't get it. So what, we give Guardiola a pass, Stevie? a pass. Uh, I think I think as far as what he was doing with his selection going forward, he shouldn't get a pass. You know, a uh, person I would have put the lap in there to start with because, you know, unless they were always going to sit tight and that meant there wasn't going to be a lot of space. You know, they, they, they had 5-4-1 is how they had it when they didn't have the ball. So how are you supposed to find space? I mean, they couldn't throw a ball in because... I mean, not one of the forward, the front three are, are six foot tall against people like Sinshaw and, and, and Evans. So I, going forward, he absolutely doesn't get a pass. Defensively, I'm not sure what he can do with the players he has defensively because in the middle of the park, Fernandino and Rodri are good on the ball, but they can't stop anybody getting past them because they can't run. And then you've got a back line, the two centre-halves in particular, who can't defend properly. So... Any, any team, regardless of, of whether it's Leicester or MDLs, is actually going to cause trouble whenever they get the ball going forward. City has spent £345 million on defenders under Pep Guardiola, Don, yet I feel every time I watch a City game, I know that they are vulnerable when they're under attack. So surely this is down to Pep, isn't it? This is down to him coaching or not coaching. <laughs> It is, Dan, and you're right. Uh, whenever you watch Man City, it's because the way they play, it's it, it must be hard for Pep, even though he's, he's an extremely good manager and, and, and seen as a genius. But the way City play, because they dominate the ball, and because they want so many players at the top end of the pitch, and then he gets his team to play a really high line because he wants to squeeze and win the ball back, it's on the transition. It's every time they play teams like Leicester who are brilliant and this happened last season with Jamie Vardy when he kept running in behind so I feel as though this is this is Guardiola's nightmare fixture because he wouldn't want to say to his side uh, defend on your own 18 yard box we'll make the pitch as big as possible because then the distances in midfield for Fernandinho and Rodri are then too big and you turn it into a sort of basketball match Guardiola wants to stifle the opposition and put that sort of high press on so when they win the ball back they're fresh but then you have people like Harvey Barnes and Jamie Vardy, which is just, he just can't manage them. I mean, it, it might be even, listen, it might be a topic for a different day, but when Robert Van Persie went to Man United for that one season and guaranteed Man United the title, it's almost like Guardiola needs to do that with Jamie Vardy and find someone that's just completely different to what he's got. But in the back, it's every time you watch them, they look vulnerable. As you said, Dan, you see a side, you see a Man City side, you're never quite sure what their best pair it is. Um, Laporte was on the bench today. I, I'm still stunned that even though in this market with 10 days left in the window and this might force Guardiola into doing something, he needs to go into Europe and look at maybe Upper Meccano or someone like Koulibaly just to try and convince everyone watching and more so the opposition players because when the opposition players see the Guardiola 11, they'll be rubbing their hands thinking we can score goals against them. But what Leicester did today was no surprise, Stevie. So surely Guardiola, who's regarded as one of the best managers in the world, has got to change his tactics and got to address exactly what Leicester were going to go out in there and do. You could have said, you, everybody knew what was going to happen in this game, the way Leicester were going to play. So why isn't Guardiola thinking ahead? How, how, well, you, you're saying he has to change his tactics. and you, Are you talking about having even more people back? I'm talking because about not, not leaving answer. yourself not... vulnerable to Leicester on the break. Every time the ball came over... No, 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 done, done. You've got, you've got... Up, in, up until Leicester went ahead 3-1, you basically had Harvey Barnes and Vardy going at the back 3 or 4. So you've got men up. It's not, it's not like it's 2v1 against you. They've got men up. They're not good enough. Listen, we, we shouldn't... We shouldn't under, uh, underestimate. There are not that many centre backs in world football that can actually dominate their line and organise their line. That's why Vincent Company was so good. Vincent, the, the players are, are pretty much still there. They were there when Company was there, but he was the one organising everybody. He was the one positioning everybody when they had the ball, so that when it, it broke down, they weren't getting run out at pace. It's exactly what Van Dyke. Van Dyke joined. Liverpool's back line.
line and completely transformed it. One guy. They were they were losing goals all over the place. Exactly how City are losing it, and that one guy turned it around because he put them in the right spots. But this City team doesn't have anybody want to do it, and they don't have the players that understand it. But Stephen, they spent so, all this money. What's he supposed all to do? Three, three all he's got to do is attack. Pounds. Surely, with all that money, they could have found someone who could come in and do exactly that. The right. was supposed to do that, yes? So here's the question. Here's the question. Who's picking the defenders? Guardiola. That's what we need to know. Guardiola, uh, isn't it? It's his team. Well, it's his and project. If it, well, and if it... Well, that's not always but the case. But you know what he's picking, though, Stevie? But you know what Guardiola's today. picking? Guardiola's picking people like Nathan Aki, good on the ball. John Stones, good on the ball. How about going and buying proper defenders? I'm, I'm not going to disagree with that. I'm not going to disagree with that. Yeah. But if you think Pep is going to, if you think Pep is going to turn around and change the way he plays, he's all about attack. So yeah. if he's picking the defenders, then somebody up the stair, it's about taking the win. Uh, by the way, I'll tell you what we're doing in the future. We'll organise the back players and you can do sort of outgoing and attacking because that's what you're all about. He absolutely is fantastic at getting teams to go forward and attack and, and cut defences up. But he's always... They're, they're, they're they're the problem, Dan, so, they're so if he's problem. picking when, the players, he should be. Play, when Man City play, they play up from the back. They use Edison to be the extra man, so they want all playing centre-halves. That's what Guardiola wants, and you can't really knock him for what he's done in his career, the style that he's done it in. It's just with City, it's just they're sending a message, a wrong message to everyone in the Premier League where it's a semi-negative one because every team has their day where I played against the great Man United sides, you play against Chelsea, and you play against the Invincibles, and you're half stand in the tunnel and you think, oh, we've got a job on to get some again the game. Man United lost that, the Invincibles then lost that, Chelsea then lost it when Jose moved on. And I think Pep's got to be careful that they don't lose that, that cloak of you know, being invincible because at the minute they look just a soft touch. Where do we stand overall where we start questioning Pep at City? It's difficult. I mean, you've got to question him for the results that you're seeing. Um, he's been brought in to win the Champions League. Uh, they lost the league by, as you said, 18 points and were never, ever in it. They didn't even put up a fight last, last season. But things have to improve. The difficulty is when we talk about Guardiola, and Stevie touches on that there about maybe he's changing the midfield players and shutting the game down in midfield. It's not how he plays. He didn't do that at Bayern. He didn't do that at Barca. He won't do that at Man City. Whenever you see Guardiola get interviewed after a loss, he will tell us, we should have scored more goals. That's his, that's his mantra. That's his philosophy. It's the way he's going to go about every single game. He ain't going to change. We're just going to have to see which results, negative or positive, comes along for Man City. I'm not sure you can criticise him. Um, even though we're seeing teams, sounds like a contradiction, because you're seeing teams like Leicester 5 past them. But they're quite capable of playing someone next week and beating someone 6 or 7. Spurs against Newcastle, Spurs 1-0 up. Of course, we talked yesterday a lot about the, the handball that was given in the Everton Crystal Palace game. Uh, Stevie said that it was the handball, right. it was the right decision, which leads us then to 24 hours later. Stevie, was this the right decision, the handball given against Eric Dyer? Absolutely not, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. Because I told you yesterday that the fact that Ward was, was three foot away from the ball uh, and, and his opponent is why I said it was a penalty. And the reason I'm saying this is not a penalty is because Eric Dyer is about six inches. His body's about six inches away from Andy Carroll. And his arms his arms away from his body, yes, because, because he's in the air. And that's why it's not a penalty. I can't, I can't make it any clearer than that. It's all about how close you are to your opponent. And if you're six inches away and the ball hits your arm, that, that's, that's not a penalty. Don? I was at Selhurst Park yesterday uh, when the Joel Ward penalty got given, and I said in commentary I'd be stunned if it was given. Um, and I looked at the referee when he went to the monitor and gave the penalty, and I was really close from, my, uh, from the gantry to people like Andros Townsend uh, and Will Saha and Joel Ward. And they sort of laughed with, it's a little bit of embarrassment really because the players know that when you play the game when you are an athlete go back to Victor Lindelof last week all Victor Lindelof was guilty of was running 
which therefore his arms are in a natural direction, not unnatural, but a natural run and gain. That gets given as a penalty. Joel Ward, the ball got headed off him from Luca Dean from a yard away. You can't react, you can't get your hand out of the way. And then the one today that we've seen in the Spurs game, I'm not sure if you're playing on the pitch now, what you can actually do when someone hits a ball off your arm for one yard, two yard, three yards away. It's impossible, you've got no reaction time whatsoever. Go on, Stevie. No, it wasn't a yard away uh, because he wasn't touched tight, you know. And I'm, and I'm, I'm coming from a point of where they, they have to decide on something. And why not that? A proper defender is touched tight, and if you're touched tight, then it can't be a penalty. If you're further away, then it's a penalty. You know, there has to be some, there has to be some sort of con conclusion to this because it's just. It's, it, it seems we're all getting further and further apart, whether one's a penalty or not. We need to come to some sort of conclusion and say, right, try and get this down to something pretty straightforward. And that, to me, straightforward. If you're touch tight, it's not a penalty. If you're not, if you're any further distance away, it is. It's but Stevie, how would, you, how would you feel, Stevie, if I'm playing against you and I back you up inside the 18-yard box and I'm two yards away? Because I tell you what, we're going to see it. We're going to see a player deliberately kick the ball off a defender's arm and that'll get given as a penalty. Oh, that, that, don't how, start that. How would you, how I've would heard you that before. Don't, I'm not being funny. Well, I, seriously, see, you're, going to, you're going to be in the penalty box and the only thing you in mind <laughs> is to try and kick it on, onto the hand of the guy that you're playing against. Come on, don't give me that nonsense. No, 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 I've heard no, that. No, if I, no, if I'm, that if I'm in the 18 yard box, Stevie, and I'm not in front of goal, I'm, the 18 yard box is quite big and I've got you in an area where I can't score from. I've got you out wide in the 18 yard box. I can't score. I'm in a oh. blind alley. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll clip it off Stevie's hand and I'll hope when they go to the right, yard, I'll tell they you what. Well, I'll tell you what. A, I, I'd, I'd love to count on, on, the, on one hand how many players are going to try that. And B, if you it can will. do that without it being so bleeding obvious, then you're having a laugh. Thank you very much, boys. I'm pretty sure this is the last time we're ever going to discuss this. So thank you very much for that. I think we've signed a nice bow over the handball roll. Uh, just taking a look at some of the other results uh, from today. Leeds United made two wins out of three, a 3-1-0 victory away over Sheffield United, who've struggled to start the season. Uh, and in the late game, big surprise, West Ham thrashing Wolves 4-0.